GNT show is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advice. Live long and prosper, bitches. Star Trek, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the GNT show. Our continuing mission, to explore Star Trek storytelling. To seek out new worlds and interesting characters. To boldly go where no show has gone before. Naomi, Naomi Wildman. I was setting it up. Oh. Welcome to the GNT show where obviously we have no script. Yeah, let's just get this puppy started. As always, the beautiful, the lovely, the high booted, short skirted, and big breasted Terry Lynn. <laughs> that would be me. Admiral Shaw. She badass. It's Radium <laughs> Cup. <Yeah. Bah. laughs> Good morning. It's Sunday on the GNT show. <laughs> you know the worst part of this morning? It's not the getting up early, it's the fact they're making me wear clothes to do the show. It's time for coffee class. <laughs> Strap on your helmets, boys and girls. It's gonna get rough. Oh, it's gonna be one of those mornings. Let me put on my seatbelt, my helmet, with the little blinky light on top. For safety. Well, Ooh. we decided. <laughs> we were going to do the GNT show. Man. One of the things we said was no standards. GNT show does not go on the air because we're ready. It goes on the air because it's nine o'clock on Sunday morning. Mike could have snapped by then and killed us both. Pain sticks for Mike, evidently. <laughs> we have our production meetings on the air. Well, it's the best way to get you to adhere to things. Yeah, you've now set be. an expectation. Oh, That's the thing about disclaimer. the GNT show is we set no expectations. I need more coffee. Wow. This... I'm trying to figure out whether or not I want to do general news or Star Trek news, and I figured this is Terry out. having. Okay. A series of small it's strokes, news. actually. Well, it doesn't take long for this show to, to deteriorate, <laughs> does it? Straight the fuck downhill. <laughs> I don't always podcast, but when I do, I G&T. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to you live from the Best Western Center Point Inn in Branson, Missouri, it's the G&T Show's 200th episode with the guests Artie Johnson, Ruth Buzzy, Carrot Top, and Paris Hilton. And now, here's Terry Lynn. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> How are wow. You <laughs> I think it was the Paris Hilton that threw me off. I was like, really? <laughs> Paris Hilton? Ruth well, we had, we had Corey Feldman in the we, building. We had Corey, Corey Feldman, but he canceled. <laughs> Ooh, I would have liked him. <laughs> we were going to have a reunion of the Corys. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to episode 200. I'm Terry Lynn. Over there, that's Gettysburg. Joel Antru, bitches. 200. Look at us, Bicentennial. And look at him over there. It's Ceridium. Kapla. I suddenly feel old. Very, very old. <laughs> <laughs> and joining us today is our wonderful resident New Jersey Klingon. Yeah. New Jersey? Jersey? What? No. Uh, uh, Massachusetts, uh, isn't it? Yes. Well, no. I mean, she's a Klingon a Boston of girl. Long Island. I'm sorry. I Long apologize. Island's not New Jersey. <laughs> I apologize. Wow. Even I the fucked that one up. turning on you. I yeah, fucked that one up. I admit it. <laughs> I, I thought Chara was coming today. Oh! Now, but we may have Rip, Rip Taylor coming. I was gonna say Rip Torn. Didn't he die? No, Rip Taylor. We're bringing him oh. back. <laughs> he by died. popular demand. There'll be oh a seance God. later. <laughs> And he'll come out of the casket with a damn confetti. No, that, that's, Rip, <laughs> that's Rip Taylor, not Rip right, Torn. Right, right. No, oh, Rip I knew, Taylor's I knew still that. Alive. Rip Torn is still alive. So Rip is Rip Taylor Tal died? Are they no, both? Yeah. Isn't Rip Torn the guy from uh, um, Men in Black? Men in Black, yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, I thought he died. No. Oh my God, we're starting off and Terry's already fucked up twice? Where's what the hell's in the chat room? No, Ch uh, Chuck Harris died. Uh, oh, yeah. Why did I think one of the Rips passed away? <laughs> <laughs> one of the rips. Of we the could rip have had board. the rips and the Corys. Wow. I don't know. I'm tripping. Oh, how beautiful is Branson? <laughs> yeah, Branson. I uh, <laughs> wouldn't really know, so I can't comment. But After this, we're taking the entire audience to Dollywood. With the Twin <laughs> Peaks. <laughs> you know, we laugh, but from what I understand, that place is pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> What are they famous for besides, you know, the same what? thing Hooters is famous for? Except Hollywood? Hooters is famous. No, Twin Peaks. Oh, oh. I mean, one of them, I mean, Hooters is famous for boobs and wings, right? Mm -hmm. Twin Indeed. Peaks is famous for boobs and what? Hmm? Pie. Pie, yeah. Oh, you're talking about the TV show. Yes. I'm sorry. It, there's it, another it, 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 I, I don't even understand my own references, so sorry about okay. that. Okay. Yeah, no, there's a chain of restaurants that are like Hooters called Twin Beaks. Yes, and, but they still have to be better than the Tilted Kilt. And, I, and the Tilted Kilt is another one of those, you know, 
Did you? <laughs> did you? <laughs> All right. <laughs> start. Yeah, we might as well start off episode two hundred with a with with a conversation on sexism in in restaurants. Did you see how there was a bunch <laughs> of guys who worked for a, a a a restaurant chain not unlike Tilted Kilt and and Twin Peaks and Hooters, but it was where the men would go. Uh, the the men would be the restaurant uh, the the workers. Right. Right? Yeah, they were the eye and, candy. Yeah, they were the eye candy and they all wore kilts, but they all quit because the women kept grabbing their ass. <laughs> See, and it's always the it's all the men in our society, right? I know, I know. I am I am right there with you, and I'm like, okay. See, the, every I'm guy knows you don't touch the women. I... The women need to learn you don't touch the men. I was just like, well, oh, you come know, on, really? You know, there was a thing this week that I saw Terry, and I, I was going to post it, but I just didn't want to take the time on my social media to put up. But it was a. Uh, it was a college has a sign, and it's like, Jack got drunk, Jill got drunk, Jack's in jail for rape now. Oh. Um, so they both got drunk. I'm going to see if I can find it, because it's like so offensive in... Every 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 possible manner. Yeah, let me see if I can find it. Oh yeah, let's, let's start off the show with like <laughs> pissing everybody off. <laughs> well, it's well, offensive in the fact that... It's 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 like like that like women grabbing the guy's junk, oh, yeah. you know. Which, by the way, I want to know where this place is. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, see this. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it kind of breaks down, right? When you got guys going, oh, I'd get a job there. <laughs> but there are women like that, too, which is why they work. There. Okay. So how was your weeks, you guys? Um, did we were off last week because um, we did not want to do our our episode, our 200th episode, without Gettysburg, who was doing his uh, shooting, shooting time. time. And getting, getting shots. I did a show last week. It sounds G- GNT. It was just a show. You did? No. <laughs> I was going to say, please. No. Oh my God, Mike, you know how sad that makes me think that you were just in your room, like, talking and What's acting like people were there's responding? There's no one in the chat room either, so it would have been... <laughs> <laughs> no, so um, let's you ended see. up. You were still busy. You were still pretty busy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, my 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 parents. I I sent them on a cruise this oh, week. Great. That is so awesome. And uh, and they had a great time. And they're back to home safe and complaining as much as ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so I, it was me and my grandfather hanging out. You know, I had brought some strippers over, put a smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> no, Video or it didn't happen. That probably would have killed them. <laughs> probably would have killed me. <laughs> uh, no, um, no, it, we had fun. Uh, let's see. What, what, what did I, what, I played a lot. I've been playing a lot of Trexels. I've been making a lot of progress on that. I'm, I'm having fun with it. It's a fun little game. Cool. And your parents got back and they had a good yep. time. Yep. Yep. Um, and Nick, how was shooty time? You said you got shooty a lot time, of shots. Yeah, I got I got a bunch of bunch of bunch of needles. Um, it was. It, it you were bad. getting boosters, just... weren't you? Yes. Hey. Oh, I am Yay now for vaccine in... boosters. No MMR for me. Hey. You are invincible to everything now. Look, my my bloodstream's so fucked up anyway that you know. <laughs> Close in the dark. Yeah. Miss Janet, <laughs> you've been busy too. What'd you do this week and the past two weeks, really? Oh, I've been um I've been getting uh, my final project stuff ready, so I'm uh, I'm I'm doing lots of that. Lots of uh, I I have to make an app, or I have to make sort of like the skeleton of an app. So I'm doing it on um, uh, it's called Emergency Paris, and it's all about uh, all these all these little things you might want to you know know for like an emergency phrase book if you had to go to France and suddenly you don't know French. Uh, so you know, I ask people. That happens what? every week. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so I'm asking people, you know, what are your uh, like your top four or so uh, sentences, you know, for various scenarios, and people are asking me things like, do, "Do you allow children on this ride?" And I'm like, "Okay, you don't seem you people don't seem to understand. All I want is things like, what is your name or my car is on fire. You know, real life. You know, <laughs> it, it, either it's an emergency or you just got there none of this going on and on and on into this you know like we're we're in euro disney and and we've been here for 16 hours and we we have this question it's so i'm never going to be designer that's where is the bathroom that's like an important one yes number one question where is the bathroom okay here we go there it is terry okay see what he's got is it the chat room 
Um, another one uh, I think I had suggested, which is pretty much all purpose, is uh, would you like another glass of wine? <laughs> nice. Always useful. What? So what's wrong Always with this poster? Friends. Okay. Oh, yeah. You and I talked about this. Because um, mm-hmm. Jake was drunk. Josie was drunk. Jake and Josie hooked up. Josie could not consent. Okay. Why? The next day, Jake was charged with rape. Okay. My question about that is, is one, because it's such a basic factual thing, right? It's like, here's fact number one and here's fact number two. Why doesn't it work both ways? Exactly. How, How do we know that Josie well? didn't rape Jake? And so my question on that was, does the law specifically state that a semi-flaccid erection is consent? <laughs> From what I understand, it only takes two glasses of wine for consent to be blown out the window. By but, either but party. my whole problem with this is they both got if drunk. The wo- if the woman has yet- two glasses of wine, she cannot give consent, apparently. Well, how well, can he give consent if he had the same amount of wine? He shouldn't be able to. That's my, that's what our point is, is that why <clears throat> in this, this particular situation where it's like this is this, this is this, and they're both drunk, then it's 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 all offsetting the man's rape? Fault. It's all the man's fault. Mm-hmm. I don't it's know. It's assumed I, I, that he roofied her. And no, Wow, even I didn't read that. Wow, that, I Mike. didn't either. I'm like, oh, <laughs> really? You're dark today. Wow. No, I, I, I think it's assumed that what is essentially an autonomic nervous system reaction mm-hmm. is uh, somehow implying consent and that's absolutely not true well, that's what i said i said a, a semi flaccid erection is not in and of itself um consent because men how, get how raped. do we know that josie isn't a champ when it comes to drinking and jake is a fucking lightweight who I passes know. out it's a dumbass poster i admit it it is a dumbass it's a dumb poster. Law. I, you know what to a degree it is i think having a verbal i don't know it's it's um it's always going to come down to he said she said in a lot of situations <laughs> son son says jake is bill cosby now <laughs> oh, oh man wow. well played that's why i always videotape every activity oh sorry, dear I'm finishing up my breakfast. <laughs> wow mike <you laughs> sorry really wow he Don't is. get them I'm confused. so impressed. Look what happens when we have a week off. I know. Well, yeah, and and look how far I've come in like 200 episodes. This is true. <laughs> this is now, true. <laughs> now I have to say, here mm. come to pudding. <laughs> Is that a no face? Oh my god! I think that's a no face. That's that's... oh (laughs) Oh my god! Now, did any of you see Ant Man? Not yet. No. I've been wanting to get your opinion on it so I can figure out whether or not I want to see it. (laughs) All right, all right, set around, kids. All all I know is that Starfleet mom saw it and said it was great. So settle settle around, kids. Here here we go. Now I will admit, going into this film, I didn't have the normal Marvel uh, goosebumps and excitement. Because I was really nervous because it's Ant-Man. You know what I mean? And I'm also yeah. not seeing the push like you saw for Guardians and, of course, Avengers. You know what I mean? Yeah. This movie was the most fun I've had in years. That's that's what I'm hearing. Wow. Cool. Even this, more fun than, than Guardians? It's it's like Guardians. That's it, pretty it's freaking that much awesome. Paul, Paul Rudd is really good. But Paul Rudd is always really good. Yeah. Michael Douglas is spectacular. Cool. Um, now, if you're a Marvel Comics fan... There are so many Easter eggs in this movie uh, sh- and, and things that like I was like, oh, are you kidding? Oh, my God. Really? Oh, wow. And they're introducing a lot of stuff that, that for the Marvel Universe, not outright. A lot of setup for the next half dozen not, films. But not outright. They're, they're, like things will be mentioned or, or you know what I mean? Like blah, blah. It, it, it's just really interesting. There are some great there is a great cameo that surprised me in this movie and it's a funny cameo too cool. um this is not, i'm not gonna spoil anything by saying this i knew it was okay when in the very first minute of the movie heli atwell is in it oh really? very cool yeah wow cool. Now, I will never understand people who go to a Marvel movie, and as soon as the credits start, they get up and leave. Well, they want to dumb. beat the traffic to the Oh, car. oh, you mean the end credits? Yes, the end okay, credits. Okay, okay, There's two yeah, post-credit idiots. scenes. Oh my god, and they missed them? Two post-credit scenes. The first post-credit scene, of course, comes about 
halfway in because you know how they do it. Yep. And that one didn't surprise me. It was something I had been waiting for all movie. So I was really happy to see it. Oh, by the way, mm-hmm. Evangeline Lilly, I don't know if I've ever seen her in anything before, but I want to see her in more. Um, <laughs> she's really good in it. Uh, but the second post credit scene is, of course, just before the lights come up. All right. It blew my mind because it's setting... Uh, 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 okay, I can say this. It's setting up a major event in one of the upcoming movies. Very cool. A major event. Very, very cool. Yay! The, the visuals on this movie... Now, and we... My, I went with my friend Lindsay, you know, my, my movie-going mm-hmm. buddy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we, we, we took the dive and went and saw it in IMAX 3D. Mm-hmm. Wow. Really? The 3D was really good. And, I, you know, I'm not a 3D guy. Right. But I kind of agreed to it for this because... I, <sighs> You've seen the commercials. I yeah, mean, he's he running like around he's tunnels with shit. ants. Yeah, exactly. You know? um, so yeah, it, 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 it seems like this is going to be a fun th- use of 3D. I mean, flying really, around really on was. insects. And, doesn't yeah, he have and, like uh, a, a? He rides a flying ant or something. Oh, Anthony. That's his it, name. Did you say Anthony? Anthony. 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 <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> okay. The, Thank you. But y- you know, let me let me say this. We walked out of the theater, and I said to Lindsay, "You know, it's a fun movie and a good movie when you care if an ant dies." Yes. So, that, that's yeah. And say they're playing for character. That's totally that's how Disney ca- and Marvel do, do it. The yeah. setup for him to become Ant Man takes oh, I want to say thirty to forty minutes. Yeah, and there's a very human, real reason why he gets the suit, the Ant Man suit. Well, there's several real. There's the hero reason, but there's also the personal reason he's chosen. And of course, it's Marvel. Hey, DC, listen up, please, because <laughs> I got something to say. <laughs> because one of the trials was for Batman versus Superman. Um, let me just say this, that his three sidekicks who are criminals, because you've seen from the commercial that he's a criminal who's given the suit by, by Michael Douglas, who's playing Hank Pym. Now, if you know Marvel Comics at all, the name Hank Pym is massive in, Mar- in, in, in Marvel Comics. Um, but his three buddies are hilarious. And Terry, there's a scene where they do exposition. Have you ever seen Drunk History? Yes. <laughs> That's how the exposition is done. <laughs> oh, man. That's yes. really funny. <laughs> yes. So, hey, DC, that's what you're missing in your movies. Humor. Drunk history. Oh, drunk history? Oh, humor. Well, humor. I mean, when you've got... <sighs> Mm. I, it just I see it, what it, you're saying. Yeah. You, well, well, that's what everything that's you know, that's every my biggest complaint about not just DC films or superhero films, or it's just about films in general. Everything has all been about into darkness, into darkness, into darkness, right? Well, it's all dark dark, into dark, 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 dark. Speaking of into darkness. Yes. We had the trailer, which I had already seen, of course, for The Force Awakens. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I'm going to it made me angry. Why? I'll let him figure out his words on this one. No, I know it's, that it's, this, this movie is going to be fucking awesome. Yeah, it's going to be. It's yeah. going to be amazing. Yeah, I, I, I kind of know J. where J. you're going. Abrams, yeah. you, 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 you have angered me because you didn't give two shits about Star Trek. That's exactly why I was like jealous. I'm so jealous. I'm, I'm not jealous. So I'm angry jealous. because you can see the love and the, the, mm-hmm. the, the amazing care that is going into this. Now, I'm not saying there was no care put into into his two Star Trek movies. I, obviously, you know. Yeah. But you should... Actually, I'm more angry at Paramount. Because yeah. somebody should have been chosen that loved the franchise as much as he and then given loves that person, Star Wars. Well, I'm hoping that Justin Lin is a, a move in the right direction. I am, I'm very, very hopeful that it's a move in the right direction. And and he, I don't know, he seems to have a, a thorough respect for the mm-hmm. IP, where we know that J.J. did not. Um, I just hope that, to be honest with you, I mean, let's face it, J.J. Abrams made it very clear to everyone when he took on the first Star Trek film that this was his was, audition for Star Wars. It, that this was his audition for Star Wars because he loved Star Wars. He wanted to be able to do Star Wars. He wanted to make Star Trek more like Star Wars because he loved Star Wars so much. And it's obvious what he did in the first. And two look, films. JJ, I'm not hating on you for loving Star Wars. No, you're you're, you're with millions, and and I really think that it, what JJ is going to do really is what Star Wars needs. Because let's yeah. face it, we all saw the prequels. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 
I, I, Did you see I, that thing up yeah, that, that I posted this week that somebody posted a meme or a, a tweet that uh, all of the people who were upset about the new Harper Lee book, you know, go set a watchman. <laughs> and it just said um, to all of those uh, to kill a mockingbird fans. It's OK if you want to ignore the material you don't like. Love sincerely Star Wars fans. <laughs> um, it was, <laughs> Excellent. But, but it, this is it, it, it was this is the first time I've seen that trailer on the big screen. And I actually got excited for Star Wars. Yeah, I'm very excited for Star Wars. That's why I said it's going to make me angry. Yeah, it's going to crack a billion dollars that opening weekend. It's going to crack a billion dollars. It just is. Um, It's it's going to be gross amounts of money. Absolutely gross amounts of money. And JJ, if it's what we think it's going to be, you will deserve every accolade that comes your way. And and Matthew Anderson just posted in the chat room a picture of the Amy Amy Schumer uh, GQ layout from Star Mm -hmm. Wars. I wasn't that freaking adorable. I laughed I, so hard. I love her. Everybody back off uh, with Amy Schumer because if you listen to this show way back years ago, I was talking about Amy Schumer being hot and that I wanted to bang her. Now she's the <laughs> it girl. Now everybody wants to bang her. No, no. I wanted her first. Oh, please. Oh, Did my you God. see her on Ellen? No, I didn't. No, oh, I didn't. I'll, I'll look it up. Uh, uh, Ellen couldn't talk. She was laughing so hard. Disney shook their finger at her. Well, no, no they didn't. This. What they did was they had to kind of go, Disney had to kind of go, we didn't authorize the use of our characters in that way. Amy Schumer smart enough to know that under fair use and parody mm-hmm. that she could do so. That's just what happens. And big companies have to come out and go, look, we didn't authorize this. But you know, 90% of the people who work in at Disney going, damn, that's some awesome PR for us. <laughs> Speaking of which, <laughs> thank you, Matthew Anderson. Oh, did you see my squad. post about that movie? Yes, Terry. Yes, I- I'll admit it. I was not sold on the idea, and you know how I love me some Suicide Squad and some Harley Quinn. Yeah, right. This trailer, fucking, I was mining diamonds with my cock after that trailer. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, this image. Yeah, I'm going. Welcome to episode 200. Yeah, yeah. And, and and I'm sorry, people that don't like this Jared Leto just from the, this this the, the clips and everything. It's the Joker. It's allowed to have different. Ver- there was a dreadlocked Joker in the comics and in the animated series. Okay, it, 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 there's nothing wrong with updating the look and making him different, but yet still the same. Yeah, yeah I'm. <laughs> and I love the boy. <laughs> that Jared Leto has for it? I have to say, I thought it was pretty cool. I'm going to have to get used to it. I'm, <coughs> pardon me, at I'm not a big Suicide fan. At least Suicide Squad has color, unlike uh, Batman versus Superman. Very true. But, and Terry, that, what? it's not orange and teal, Batman versus Superman. No, it's just in his hair. It's teal hair, orange lips. <laughs> no, but I'm talking Batman versus <laughs> Superman. Oh, I know, I know. Um, th- I have to say the Batman versus Superman trailer that I saw too was very interesting. I'm intrigued by, I'm very intrigued. I have to say I'm very excited for for Wonder Woman in that film. I'm very excited for Ben Affleck. You know what? He, he looks definitely great. looks great. He really does. He looks great. That um, and that scene of him running into the the, the dust mm-hmm. as the building's collapsing. Yeah. That was that yeah. gave me chills because yeah, I like that. I did too. And and it made me be- but that's exactly what that character would have done, especially if it was his building, right? And yeah, and for those that don't know, all of this is now cropping uh because Comic-Con was last week. <laughs> This is true. We've been crazy busy. So let's, um, uh, why don't we get to some actual Star Trek news? Well, because... uh, real quick before we do that, because Nick mentioned Comic-Con. Yes. And earlier we had mentioned Haley Atwell. Oh my God, too funny. We do have to talk about that. Christopher you... Carter. You. That's I know. I, I know. He. I'm so excited for him. That was awesome. Um, the, I have shared um... the link in the chat room. Uh, this is uh, all of the videos with Haley Atwell and, and Chris Evans uh, and the, the cast from uh, Agents well, of a- Shield. And... Agents of Shield went to started a I don't know who started it. Started a um, a <laughs> Doug smash. Haley Haley Atwell and and uh, and Jarvis. I don't know the guy's name. <laughs> they Jarvis, started. the guy who plays yeah. Jarvis. Oh, Jarvis. Yeah, I, I th- I'm thinking of the one with um, uh, Phil Coulson. What's his name? Um, James, right. Dar- uh, James Darcy is the guy who plays uh, Jarvis on Agent Clark. Okay, so Agents of Shield versus Agent Carter mm-hmm. doing dub smashes, and they kept one upping each other with the dub smashes. And I think Haley pretty much sunk it this week when Chris Evans popped into her last one. Yeah. That's- 
what you're talking about. It was hilarious. Um, and I love what they're doing, not just – these people look like they're having such a good time. The Mar- I think the Marvel people are having a blast. They're having a blast. They're having such a good time. They're laughing all the way to the bank too, but you Well, know. That's, that is the <laughs> truth, but you, there isn't anything about these where – these movies where you're not actually just kind of going, God, wouldn't it be fun just to hang around these guys for a day? Yeah. Oh, for a day. One, one more thing regarding JJ. Mm. I know that we've all seen the scene a couple of times now and we all have our opinions on what a tool tom cruise is but that's stunned from Mission that's impossible <laughs> that's and he had to do it several times and i'm gonna say this tom cruise has never been accused of not being a hard-working actor never but that's oh, no. stunned no, yeah. that stunned is fucking amazing it is it, um for those who may not know you gotta check out the uh the trailers for mission impossible number 45 Rogue Nation. Um, Mission whatever. Impossible, Rogue Nation. Yeah, Mission Impossible, whatever. Another IP that was completely fucked up. Um, and by just just in the first damn movie, they, they screwed that. I, I refused to watch any Mission Impossible after that. And I loved that television show. Okay, so but but that stunt, but that stunt is pretty he, damn amazing. Tom he did it. Tom Cruise did it on his hanging own, hanging off a plane. Hanging off a plane. He's hanging off an airplane. It's pretty freaking amazing. Uh, you should check out the. There's numerous films now out about the work that he did on that stunt. He looks right. great too for his age. Well, not much I'm, older I'm, than me. But I'm me. looking at this meme that um, I, I I don't see who, but I'm gonna assume it's 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 uh. <laughs> that it's Matthew Anderson that put it up. Paul Rudd is 46? Yeah. That blows my mind. Why? I thought he was in his 30s. Oh, no. And Batista's I... 46? That that kind of blows my mind. Yeah, see? Um... I would have picked Mark Ruffalo to be the oldest of the group, not RDJ. Are, yeah, I, and I know for a fact that he's that old because I remember watching him in, like, fucking... All the Brat Pack films when I was his age. I, I, well, I he apologize. and I are the same age. So, so. I apologize, Sun Sale. It was Sun Sale that put it up. I'm sorry, sweetie. Would you like some tea? I'm very sorry, Miss Silverfall. <laughs> Let's get to some Star Trek news. Star Trek news. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Episode 200. Hey, um, yeah. that guy in the back row over there at the table, if he continues to be rowdy, you can kick him out. <laughs> Did you notice that Opus is in the uh, chat room? I noticed. Welcome, welcome back, Bloom County. Yes. Very happy to see Yeehaw. that. Yeehaw. I thought Bill the Cat would be here, but he probably got lost. <laughs> He's <Heck>. like... <laughs> I think Bill is trying to figure out how, yeah, he, he, Donald Trump, that's going to be, it has to be the reason why he came back. Okay, let's start off with, um, you know, let's start off with some really positive news about the new film or about the the, 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 the characters of the new film. Star Trek Movie News! <laughs> There, uh, this week, uh, a release came out on not just YouTube, but on uh, StarTrek.com. Um, no. Oh, all of my, there it is. Where uh, you can, if you if you choose to donate to uh, a, a group, how do I say? It? You choose to donate to this nonprofit organization which supports several different um, chosen charities. You can win a walk-on role in Star Trek Beyond, and it's kind of cool where you you can donate ten dollars and you get a hundred entries. If you so, it's multiplied by ten. So everything that if you donate two or uh, twenty five dollars, you get two hundred and fifty entries. If you Donate a hundred, a hundred dollars, you get a thousand. All of that kind of thing. But it was the trailer for it, the actual YouTube video that I absolutely adored because it outlined not just the the, the cast of, of Star Trek Beyond, but right there at the very end, Idris Elba makes an appearance, and then if you watch all the way to the very end, he, they all start Started to dance. Break dancing. He, he starts <laughs> this kind of semi <laughs> this break dance. I love him. <laughs> I love it, Idris Elba. It was Elba. fun. 
That but video was, also yeah. has the distinction of showing us a walkthrough of the Enterprise. Right. So this is the first sneak peek at the sh- into interior of the ship. So, you know, multiple Well, no, I mean, we've seen it before. I don't think they've... Well, not... Well, this is the, the Star Trek three version. Every, every version, they, they tend to, to, you know, change it a little bit. And yeah, this is it just, looks good. It does look good. I don't Speaking see as the, many uh, lens flares. Speaking... <laughs> stop it. Speaking of the actors there, Chris Pine I saw a trailer for an, a movie he, that's coming out with him set, I think it's in like the 30s or the 40s where he's in the Coast Guard and it's about the most daring or, or the, the, the toughest rescue that the Coast Guard ever did. It's a true story. Huh. But I was very excited because, for, I, I don't know why, but for some reason this makes me excited that it's Chris Pine in a movie with Casey Affleck. Huh. I know, right? Yeah, very interesting. But too young, yeah. you know. Well, there's there's no doubt that, that Chris Pine has an amazing career. Career. And for but, you ladies that, that that cream yourselves over Chris Pine, wait until you see him dressed in 40s gear with a 40s haircut. <laughs> no kidding. Good God, I almost came. <laughs> oh, man. Is he trying to do the Boston accent? That, that's I didn't quite catch that in the yes, trailer. Yes, I think it's Rhode Island. I think he's going with the Rhode Island accent. Hmm, okay. Because actors mangle that pretty much constantly. Yeah, it, it does. It, they all do. They all movie. do. Well, getting back to the, um, to, to the video... Uh, it's the the name of the organization is Omaze. Uh, you can head over to uh, the Omaze site. Donate what you can, get the entry, but it's not just, uh, there's like a secondary prize for another group of people who will be able to travel to the uh, set of Star Trek Beyond, meet the cast and crew. So it, there's more than just one winner here. It's just one winner gets the walk-on role. Everybody else gets to, everybody else who gets to win uh, the second prize will be uh, uh, be able to visit the, the set, which I think would be a blast. And I don't know, it, this kind of, this kind of change for me too because it this shows to me how they're kind of handling the marketing of the third film very differently than they did from the first two um while justin lynn still does like the tweet leaks where he posts a picture of that patch or he's done something like that they're actively as a group starting to show themselves we're an active production we're having fun kind of doing what they didn't do in the first two films um, instead of trying to keep everything all super, super, super secret, they're acknowledging a lot of stuff, and it's making me more excited for the third which film. Which J.J. is doing the opposite with in Star Wars. Exactly. Which, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, but on on the heels of that, um, Mike uploaded a, a, the Trek core. Uh, it's a real, real, real... It, you know how they, you know how our, our favorite uh, Star Trek news sites will grab a quote and then throw something up. I, Trek Corps is not above it. They do it too. And said that Alice Eve isn't sure if she's going to be in the next film. So yep. that's kind of all it was. <laughs> yeah, one line, but you know, it was Alice Eve. <laughs> but Alice I, Eve. We yeah. had last seen her aboard the Enterprise and apparently she's not, she may not be in the film, new film, so she must have gotten off. But I, I thought it would have kind of been nice, you know, if, because this is an alternate universe, if, if if her, if she had stayed aboard, maybe shown a little, a little bit of more of that relationship actually being a healthy relationship. <laughs> I don't know, but I, a healthy relationship. You know, this turns into not a healthy relationship, right? Well, this is an alternate universe, so I was like thinking maybe this, is, you know, that's one of the things that changed. But yeah, guess not. <laughs> well, an alternate universe is she's smart enough not to get pregnant. <laughs> Okay. Um, Touche. Wow. Let's... <laughs> did I say that out loud? I certainly did. Evidently, there's no condoms in the 23rd century. Well, no, exactly. Ooh. Like, please. Like, there's got to be better birth control. There's got to be. They're made out of gorm skin. <laughs> well, in, uh, in, in DS9, it was established that it's, it's a shot that, that Cisco forgot. Which oh, you know yeah, what? So don't, condoms, don't even... shots, it doesn't matter. Benjamin motherfucking Cisco wants to get a woman pregnant. That shit's getting through. He's slipping one past the goalie. That's right. <laughs> we'll talk about Cisco a little bit later, though. Then he'll jump into a wormhole to escape the responsibility. Uh, Ladies, uh, shut up. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, episode number two hundred, <laughs> and look who's here. It's Lem. Yay! Yay! 
Kai Lim. Uh, I just posted a link for uh, Elba in Vancouver uh, for Star Trek Beyond, um, and it, I did not know he was a DJ. Well, that's cool. <sighs> Yeah, he he had a party, and there's also photos of Lynn and and some of the other cast members in uh, in Dubai as well. So um, that was kind of interesting. But uh, seeing seeing Elba, you know, behind the turntable, and of course he's getting lots of they attention filming from in the Dubai? ladies. Yeah, they're, yeah some they of it. just announced they're going to start filming in Dubai. I wonder, I wonder if Dubai is opening up like for films and stuff. You know how country, like Canada does. Because they and all need of that? the fucking money. <laughs> Well, that's the thing is that they, 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 they obviously don't, but it's a great pe- way to get people there. Well, I, I th- no, I really do think that, that Dubai is running into a, they have too much, that they're oversaturated right now with yeah. a lot of things and nothing to fill it in. And mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're learning real fast that they're going to have to change. So I think they're opening up because they need the money. I really do believe that they need the money. <laughs> Um, yeah, but it's Dubai. I mean, so the architecture yeah. does look like an alien planet. Plus, it kind of you know, does. That's true. You know? Have you ever so seen those videos works. of yeah. the, uh, the buildings are so tall that the clouds are like yeah. halfway through the building? Mm-hmm. So like if you're on the top floors, you can't see the ground at all. All you see is clouds. Yeah, that's, that's pretty fucking awesome. I mean, and, and some of it is an uninhabitable desert, right? So you have most contrast. Of you have the contrast between the it's uninhabitable like uh, and uh, this, you know, and a almost alien world. And then you have the, the this stark, you know, Tony Stark? super, <laughs> super modern uh, uh, architecture. And yeah, it's just it, it, it just seems like the perfect location for an alien world. Yeah, so... Uh, oh, Michael, goodness. G- g- uh, g- uh, I can't pronounce his last name. I'm so Gichino. horrible. Thank you. Um, it looks like he is going to be doing the, the, the music for Star Trek Three, Which makes me very happy because I think that if anything, uh, uh, if anything, I've loved the music. I have yes. loved the music. So I've owned the soundtracks, but I don't own the movies, <laughs> if that tells you anything. What's that? <laughs> His quote. It's, no, oh, look at look at the, the red. Camera. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> that's good. The pregnant uh, She Hulk. <laughs> Uh, the quote is, I haven't really talked to them yet about it because they're in such a crazy schedule crunch. And I personally wanted to get get through all of this before looking at anything next. I need a break, but I imagine that I'll be talking to them soon about all of this and we'll figure out what's going to happen next. From what I understand from everyone at Bad Robot, everyone loves Justin. He's a super sweet guy, so we'll see what happens there. Honestly, I just like, I can't even think beyond next week, let alone next year. Yeah, I just wanted to clear so all of this stuff busy. out. Right. He's so busy. So I was very glad to hear that he was able to do the, the third film. Because I like the consistency of the music. Yeah. Yes. I, I mean, it's Star the same Trek reason why I like John Williams for Star Wars, right? It wouldn't be the same. Speaking of which, hey, JJ, I don't care what you have to do. And and I say this to somebody who's like, eh, about Star, Star Wars. Y'all studio, y'all need to work with 20th Century Fox to get the fanfare. Otherwise, it's not Star Wars. They think they, they can't. You know I that. Know. I you know. know that. But it's, it's, it, it's just not. Come, tell me if you're from a certain generation when you hear that 20th century fox fanfare in your head the next thing you hear is the opening of the star wars music yes yes and and alan and i have been talking about this alan was actually doing a lot of research and going through um there's actually a couple of really great youtube videos that outline the history of the not just the 20th century fox fanfare but every major studio's uh, introductory fanfare from um, like the MGM Lion, the MGM Lion, and everything, and has every single version of it over the course of the life of the studio. Wow, and it's very, very interesting. So when the you Universal watch them, you one see... has had a shitload, and it's very fun to see how they finally said, "Okay, yes, we like the history of the old, you know, like the lion, but I really have to say, I really liked it when they started in the eye of the lion and then started to pull back." Yes, and I love that, you know. Um, and at 20th Century Fox is the same way is is you don't realize how the fanfare was so so short and it wasn't until like right around the same time as Star Wars in the 70s when they decided to go back to the full fanfare mm-hmm. and 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 they only used the full fanfare with certain types of I want to say it was like 70 millimeter film so oh, if you really? saw it on a 35 millimeter screen you didn't get the full fanfare but you did on the 70 millimeter because it was 
is considered to be grander, right? Interesting. I was very interested to, to, to learn that, that there, it depended on which version of the film you might have seen as well. So, um, yeah, I'll miss that. I'll miss that. But at the same time, one of the things that I learned from Alan doing all of this research was this the history of the Disney one as well, right? So With Disney, the castle and the, with the, the castle, rainbow? It changes for every single film. It's different yeah, I knew for that. every single yeah. movie. So I've also heard what is allegedly rumored to be the fanfare for Star Wars. And it it, it is, uh, it's a tribute. It's respectful, but it's not as regal. Right. So I'm hoping that, I'm hoping it gets tweaked. Well, did it have there about the Marvel flipping pages? Because from what I understand, now I've never actually taken the time to see, but you know how when it says Marvel and it's flipping yeah, the pages? because that's Marvel Studios intro, I, right? That every one of those is different because it's like the drawn version of the movie that you're about to see. Oh, I didn't notice that. Now, that's what I've been told. I don't know if it's true, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's panels now from... Now we're going to have to go frame by frame to yeah, find out. And, and you know, somewhere out there, someone has done it. Yeah, that's true. That's pretty funny. Um, so that's actually and, like a concept art of, of the entire film? or this? The, the, well, no, because a lot of times, like, you know, it, like the Avengers Age of Ultron, because that, you know, that was a whole arc and everything, so so they panels from the comic. Oh, from the from the comic. Uh, I see. Yeah. No, uh, not not drawn for the movie, but from the comics themselves. Okay, I see. I, I was under the impression that it was yeah. It was see, the like Roger storyboard Sanders, it's from the comics. The movie is based off of. Right on. All right, so we have some additional things we need to touch on before we. There's a there's a couple of things we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking a little bit about um, some of the fan or, um, or unofficial productions that are out there. We're also going to be talking a little bit today about um, some of the, these great articles that came out about Cisco as well as Voyager. but um, So I want to talk a little bit about some of the new products that have come out in the past couple of weeks. New Star Trek products are coming in soon! One of them has already been released once before, but it's being re-released um, by the Bradford Exchange. It's the Star Trek watch. It's this really pretty looking like a diver's watch. Um, with, it's pretty. Uh, it is pretty. It really is pretty. Uh, the going price is $119, which for a decent looking watch like that isn't too bad of a, of a price. I uh, need a new watch. <laughs> it's it's a very pretty watch. And seriously, we, we talked about Olivia Munn, and we were going to talk about X-Men apocalypse too but we'll how talk about that next great week. does she look she really Cyclops. looks yeah alan is already God. you know she's on my list right i'm like yes oh, i know yeah, she's on your list yeah alan she's on many lists <laughs> she i'm so happy for her career the way it's going yeah me too um and she and, played and my I favorite character in the mohawk, newsroom and i love that they're using mohawk storm and apocalypse yeah. cool. janice okay loves, janice loves the character storm he's awesome speaking so, of which well when no. we get conventions yeah when we get to conventions we'll talk about that all right, we're still on product news because this is going to generate a little discussion. Um, th- it seems to be that CBS has found a way to work with Lego. Mm. CBS has revealed that uh, they have entered into a collaboration with Lego for Big Bang Theory Legos. That's awesome. They're adorable. They're absolutely adorable. I think they're so cute. I <laughs> they even hope... have the little Chinese food boxes. <laughs> yeah. I hope this leads to more Legos for CBS properties. Specifically, I want Star Trek. Because I, I, I love Lego video games. I absolutely love them. And ever since I started playing these Lego games, one level, there's one thing I've been wanting. I've been wanting to play Star Trek TOS in Lego form and specifically I want a salt vampire (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why but that has been on my list for like ever a little little what the hell is wrong with you try to say that fast a little lego salt vampire (laughs) a little lego salt vampire yes What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> what? Can you imagine a little Lego Mogato? That would be awesome. 
and it would be one of the it would be one of the bigger minifigures, you know, like a the little Hulk Mugato. Sized. Oh, one little Mugato, and and um, oh come on, a little Gorn. Mm, yes, too freaking cute. It would be awesome, it, but it is our one of our long time almost to a joke desires has been Star Trek Legos to the point where we even get the stink eye from John Van Sitters when we mention it. Don't we? We get a yes. stink eye, don't we? We do. We get yes. a stink eye. Like he don't mention says, Star don't. Trek and Legos in the same sentence and you're going to get the stink eye from CBS. And, I don't know what you're talking about because I would never mention that to him. Well, that's I've learned my lesson, right? I don't do it anymore. But now you, that there's you, like Big Bang Theory Legos, I'm like <laughs> did, you see, it be? did you see my interaction with him this week? <laughs> No, what? Dayton and uh, a couple of people were posting and they were like, well, what would Nan Baco do in this situation? It was a political thing. So I, of course, said that she would lead us with, you know, dignity and, and awesomeness and all of this. And then I was like, Baco 2016, <laughs> in all caps, I'm not <laughs> taking the bait. <laughs> 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 I love that guy. He's great. He's really great. Well, I'm very excited to see that CBS has at least, I mean, at least come to some kind of a simple, maybe even one-time agreement with Lego. The Lego box, is it's just adorable. So, well, this You know was, what I would love to this see? Was, this you was, know what this was Star a Trek I would request. love to see is Lego? Yeah. Uh, what was that? Okay. It was a fan request from Mike. And what did you say, Nick? You know what I would love to see uh, Lego do for Star Trek? Mike, you want Toss? For some reason, I want to see Enterprise because Lego Shran. You know what? With Lego, they could very well do all of it. I mean, and, literally, and all of the it. Enterprise uniforms would look so cool in Lego. Mm -hmm. I agree. They really would. I agree. I, oh. All of it would be would be available and open. And I would love to see a, a Lego video game based on each series, or or, and or one that one like you start on off on Enterprise and move <laughs> your way up. Ro Roger Sanderson. <laughs> And Lego Archer comes pre-beaten up. There you go. <laughs> a Lego battle Porthos damage in the yeah, battle Lego damage Porthos. Archer. Yeah, yeah. A little or a little Porthos. Oh my god. Lego Livingston. Could you imagine the doctor's uh, just the doctor's kit? You know, you the, the it comes with a, a Peruvian bat or it whatever. it comes with all the little the little animal cages and shit. Now Beverly would she she'd have to have the lab coat on, right? Mm, that yes. would be that would be nice. Yeah. Yes. I think, yeah. You have to. It's just, oh. Uh, Look at us. We're, we're all oozing. I know. I mean, Lego oh, is is so much fun. I mean, with their, with their games. The uh, Lego Indiana yeah. Jones game is a hoot. Well, they it all is. are. Yeah, all they all them are. are. So having that Lego spin to each series and then the films, and it, it could be TOS films versus, and then another, a whole other uh, game would be the T TNG films. I mean, there, the possibilities are just mind boggling, and I'm just going, ah, give me Actually, now. Mike, <laughs> how about one where you start off in Archer's Enterprise, and with each level that you, you know, after so many levels, you go to the next series? There's, I, I don't want to see, I don't want to see something like that uh, unless they were doing something like Dimensions, uh, which uh, is kind of like uh, universe spanning. Go I, through the, the Lego Guardian of Forever. <laughs> see, see that that would work as a, as a separate game, but I, I, there's so much content that Lego can, can can gleam for each of the series. They can literally do a game on on, oh, yeah. on all of Enterprise. They can do another game just on on all of TOS. They can do two two games if they wanted on TNG Voyager DS9 just yeah. because there's so much there. I mean, can you imagine uh, the the episode with Janeway going all uh, all Ripley, <laughs> or <laughs> or the, the, the macrophage with, the macrophage the, game that'd the be awesome. Yeah. where where the Herogen took over and made the whole ship a holodeck. Yeah, or, or I mean, even uh, there there was one, uh, imagine the, the 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 Q Robin Hood uh, uh, episode that would totally work in Lego. <laughs> I'm just saying, Warp, you know, a little video cut scene, Warp standing there, I am not a merry man. And then him doing a little Lego dance. <laughs> Ladies Hell and gentlemen, yeah. this is Serenium oh, you Excited. Just, yeah, I love it. I love it. It's like Lego Star Trek holodeck. And then mm -hmm. have all the holodeck episodes in there. That'd be awesome. Oh, the big goodbye. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't it be I cute? Mean, there's just so much classic stuff that they could explore. And, and oh my God. I need a, I need, I need a sham wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of things that are needed, um, Janice and I have been playing Minecraft. 
and right now we're dressed as Agent Coulson and Maria Hill because we got the Marvel skins. Wait. Um, there's Star Wars skins, but you know what? There's no skins for. Mm-hmm. 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 Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. My I horse know. is wearing diamond armor, Terry. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> It's too cute. I put another link in the chat room for heruniverse.com. This week I purchased the Captain Picardigan. <laughs> too fucking cute. You uh, got although, it? I did. I, it was delivered yesterday. It's so cute. I, um, I just saw an article where they actually had the other colors other than the, the red. But there, here's the thing. They're very different. Um, who, Geek Tyrant, I think, posted that. And what was so funny is that I felt kind of weird. It's funny when one of your friends posts something on, on Facebook and says, holy crap, these are the ugliest thing ever. And I think, well, dude, I just bought one. <laughs> you know? Um, but uh, they of, are different. Speaking of Star Trek merchandise and news, guess what I got in the mail this week? Got my five-year mission Spock Brain CD, Woo-hoo! little pin, and my t-shirt. Oh, nice. Yay. I'm, I so, haven't gotten mine yet. But five-year cool. mission, I'm going to be taking the shirt with me, Vegas, and wearing it so that I can give you guys some walk-in publicity. That's freaking awesome. Yeah. And I order 2XL because I'm going to wash it and let it shrink a size. <laughs> yeah. That's what I did with the my sweater, too. I bought it a little yeah. bit bigger because I like to have them. When it comes to cardigans, I kind of like to just have them hang. They're, hang, they're just yeah. There to, yeah. Um, How about her universe having a fashion show at Comic-Con? That's the second year in a row that they've yeah. done that. It's very cool. Um, very professional. A lot of, a lot yes. of uh, really interesting ideas it's very serious it's a very serious competition i think that's pretty cool i heard a ding what did you put in the chat room very happy to see welcome back very happy to see that expanding and 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 she's doing very well yes she's doing very well she also has if you guys click on that link uh she also has some marvel uh properties now which is very nice including some agent carter we knew her when she just had the one property just star just just star wars uh mod cloth uh they have have uh, an alternative version of the the cardigan. Um, I like with, the one I got better because it has the yes. communicator and the pips, which I think is cute. Well, th- um, this one has the black shoulders and uh, and the little wave at the bottom. Yeah, but yeah, cool. The uh, and and for those who do not know, Ashley Eckstein or Eckstein, depending on how she pronounces it, and I apologize because I don't know. Um, how does the baseball player pronounce his last name? Eckstein, right? Eckstein, yeah. Yeah, okay. She's his wife. Um, she is? Yeah. I did not realize that. Yeah. And she's also the voice for Ahsoka in Star Wars Rebels and Star Wars oh, wow. Clone Wars. I didn't realize she did all that. Yeah. Wow. That's how girl. she got into the Star Wars stuff was because she was doing the voice work oh. and and she decided to start this business because she there was no women's stuff for geekdom, right? It was right. all these – everything was fucking crew neck and boys. And so she started making these really cute female-oriented um, – uh, Now, is she wear. the designer of all this stuff or does she have a whole team? I th- she has a team, which is part of the reason why she's supporting the fashion show at Comic-Con right. is because they're, they're getting out the – word that it's it's a women's world as well and and people who enjoy the feminine the feminine wear um have a place to go now i mean even the tardis sweater is adorable the union jack cardigan <laughs> yeah isn't that cute? I mean, really, really cute stuff. Congratulations, and Ashley, stuff, as always. Which is nice. Mm-hmm. Like, 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 thought goes into all the right. designs that she sells. Exactly, and it's the, not uh, just slapping something on there and putting it out. Right, and she and they do tend to carry women's sizes, and by women's sizes, I yes. do mean plus size. So it's nice to know I can go there, get a T-shirt, get this sweater. It will fit me, and it's cute, and I still get to look like a girl, which I like. So thank you. Love her universe. Speaking of which, we've talked in the past about the 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 way, the way that Marvel, like there was no Black Widow stuff for Avengers and, and all of that at the Disney stores. Come to find out, that's because it's somebody else. Look at that. Hold on. Finish your thought. Somebody else. Somebody else that that ha- it's another manufacturer. It's not Disney. Correct. A lot of the manufacturers don't want to put out something they don't think will sell. It's not that Disney doesn't think they will sell. It's the 
license holders, right? Disney does the same thing that CBS does. They sell yeah. licenses to companies not... Uh, by the way, I, somewhere on my Facebook page, uh, does anybody get to watch or read Geek Girl Divas stuff now? she's She works oh, for yeah. Entertainment Weekly. Okay. This week, she went to Comic-Con, and after she came back from Comic-Con, she posted a video and wrote an article where she got to sit down with the lead designer director for Hasbro Toys. So, and, and asked him flat out about the women, the uh, the women of, of Marvel and, and female action figures and why they're kind of not made and what goes into it. His response was fantastic. And his response was, no, we're really trying to, because I have daughters. I want them to be able to, to get the stuff too. Um, you know, that it really is. There's still kind of that, you get the impression there's still kind of the, the, the fear factor that, you know, these things cost a lot of money to create. And if they don't sell, it's like any other product, right? You have to why be able to not just recruit. people go to a con and they, look around? And that's why, because they don't have. Now, it sounds to me like Hasbro's moving forward with it. I can't complain because we all know that pop, uh, Marvel pop vinyl, pop vinyl really went out of the way. I have a Black Widow uh, mm. pop vinyl, which is utterly adorable. Um, they have a Scarlet Witch one. Uh, so uh, oh. They do. They have a Scarlet Witch. Uh, no, I Witch. know. You know that I'm in love with the Ashley Olsen I, Scarlet Witch. It's so cute. Um, so if there is a female character or or superhero, There's, pop vinyl you know, has made it. They have a it. whole set of uh, Orphan Black vinyl yes. pops now yeah. of all the yeah. different <laughs> clones. Oh, speaking of which, congratulations. Finally nominated for yes. an Emmy. Yes, very, very much so. So overdue. Some, somebody said, "Why wasn't she nominated nine times?" <laughs> that would have been awesome. <laughs> um, so it, it it is it is something. So if I, I, hopefully I'll be able to find that link and get it to Mike or and to Janet so we can get them into the show notes about the um, Geek Girl Divas conversation with the Hasbro Toys guys. They, it was great. It was good to hear. It is not Disney who doesn't want to make this. Stuff. Stuff, there is a fear amongst the more traditional toy makers in that females haven't sold in the past, so they kind of they they kind of don't want to you know take the chance. They, going by my the, Twitter feed, limited edition. There's the answer. Come on, yeah. Seriously, going I by agree. my Twitter feed, they would sell out in an hour. I, it, there's because, no doubt. But in then my again, mind. I know so many. You know, my Twitter is is all yeah. yeah but well, there's so. also there's also this weird idea that guys won't buy female characters, which is so untrue. Yeah, because they don't even because I know because Scarlett Johansson would not open huge as in a solo Black Widow movie. All right, so some more news. Let's 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 get to uh, uh, well, well, we saw let's, a product. That I, saw, we, I have a oh yeah yeah products. yeah go for it. Let's do it. And for products, we can jump to tech as well since they kind of okay. But let's begin with uh, the Star Trek Bluetooth communicator. Uh, in that freaking cool it's a it's a bluetooth communicator you can flip it open and you can talk to someone via like your cell sprint. phone i mean it's like it's just an extension of your cell phone so but it's like totally mind block mind blowing and awesome i mean it's just like wow so yeah that that's cool um I mean, what can you say? It's a TOS communicator. It works. And it has... <laughs> <laughs> and plus, you have some iconic uh, uh, sounds from the from the show, from the series, that, that you have access to as well. So, not only is it a working communicator, but it's a working communicator. <laughs> no, I'm mean, totally awesome. I'm just like, wow, about time. It's really beautiful. The second uh, product is um, that Amazon has, has created... The Star Trek computer for our homes. Yeah, I can't. I could. That was a link. I couldn't for some reason open. I don't know if it was because it was a flash problem, which everybody seems to be having with or something or what. But um, I want to know more about this. What does it do? Basically, it's um, the big idea. Create a voice activated smartphone assistant like Siri or Google Now, but take it off the phone. Make it a smart, always listening machine in your house. Engineer it to understand you from across the room, hands free as you're cooking, reading, doing homework, discussing, living, making, making it good enough to, to be just like the conversational environmental computers on Star Trek or in the Iron Man movies. So basically what it is, it's this cylinder. You set it up somewhere in your
your house and it's always listening. Um, it's called the Echo, and um, it's supposed to be able to um, to, to respond to you uh, when when, ah. when you're when you're you know if you ask it a question. So if you say uh, Amazon, uh, no, it, it says it's it's listening all the time and to the conversation in your home, but it doesn't pay attention until you say Alexa. Alexa, you can, or change, you can change the it attention Amazon. word to Amazon, but yeah. that's your only option. It'd be so much more fun if you could make it say any name you liked. Say Hal Jarvis or Skynet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or computer. Just yes. a computer. That would be awesome. Computer. So, um, <laughs> so like, like you know, Siri and and Google Now, it's supposed to give you you know answers to your question, whether that's going to be whether it's conne- whether it's just voice answers or if it's going to be like connected to a machine to a computer somewhere uh, to be able to pull up that information. I do not know, but uh, nonetheless, this is a, an interesting step, and I think it's a, a fun product. I think it's very cool. Uh, next product um, is Anovos. Oh yeah, I did see this. Anovos, they have uh, they they showed off at uh, Comic Con um, some of their new phaser replicas. Um, these these are snazzy looking. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of them, a lot of the new ones that I've seen are TNG era, which is you know TNG DS9 Voyager. Um, but they are you know they got the, the phaser rifles as well as the the handheld phasers and uh, removable battery packs. I mean it's just, it's just the quality on these look great. Uh, so if you're looking for an, uh, a, a prop to go with your Anovos uniform, hey, look no further. <laughs> the, the TNG DS9 era rifle is really, really cool. I like it a lot. Those are very cool. Yeah. Uh, next up, it's not really so much a product yet as uh, a technology. Great. So um, it looks like someone has figured out how to develop a dermal regenerator. I heard about this. That's really kind of interesting. And with as someone uh, with chronic wounds on my legs, this is like perfect. <laughs> because it's not like a, a normal dermal regenerator that you see on Trek yet. Uh, in which, you know, if someone gets shot with a bullet or whatever, it, it just instantly heals. This, is, it, it, it's a slow process. It uses, um, I, I want to say kind of like ultrasound or some kind of sonic technology technology in order to kind of sort of uh, bring the wound together right. um, and uh, it, or slow, you know, sl- a little bit faster than normal, but uh, slowly over time, it's supposed to help, uh, help wounds heal. Right. And it's supposed to be faster than, than without it. Right. It, ha- it, it sounds to me like that. Well, I'm reading here. It says it uses a ultrasonic emitter that accelerates tissue repair or granulation, right? Because that's what happens in open wounds or is that you have to, the, the little granules of skin and mm-hmm. tissue need to kind of repopulate in what's called regranulation. Um, it can reduce healing times by as much as 30%, which I think is pretty darn interesting. Very cool. I love the advancement of technology. Yep. Very cool. And one more. Um, um, yeah, one more. And this one um, is might be considered kind of scary, but, you know, it's a step towards data. But it's also a step towards lore. So keep that in mind, people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everybody oh, panic. this is about the self-aware robot. A robot it? just had passed the self-awareness test. <laughs> oh. They had three robots, and they, they, they performed a, an experiment on them, or a series of experiments, um, to see if any of them uh, are self-aware. And what one of the tests that they did was um, they had the three robots say a, a line, or repeat a line and trying to figure out uh, with two of the robots, they had they had them muted, so they did not know the robots did not know which of them were on mute, and the ro- the robot that actually spoke uh, was able to figure out that it was his voice or its voice, excuse me, its voice that, that that was was speaking. So it was able to differentiate its it the sound of its own voice from other voices, um, and to realize that it's the one that. The it's like whoa. Yeah, <laughs> I think but therefore I am. It's it's get it's getting there. It really is until they unplug themselves, right? Just that Bloom County one. This one of the most famous Bloom County um, comics ever was the little computer that became self-aware and started jumping up and down and unplugged itself. <laughs> 
I don't know. I came home from work and my Naughty America was on and there was a big oil stain in the middle of my sheet. So I'm not yeah. sure what's going on. <laughs> There's a couple more real quick. Uh, are, are we done on the tech hunt? That's all I got okay. for tech. There's a, a couple of really quick fun ones that we can talk about briefly. Uh, okay. It, this week, uh, actually last week, while we were off, there was a, uh, I guess, a UFO sighting over Wales um, in the UK, and mm-hmm. uh, oddly and funny, Hi, it, uh, and funnily enough, uh, the the government from Wales responded to the UFO alert in in Klingon, which I thought was fucking hilarious. So <laughs> why not? It, you, I, you you have to greet the, our our alien overlords in in the proper proper language. I <laughs> thought. <laughs> that was so funny. I just it made me it made me very proud as a Trek fan to kind of go that we have a nerd. There's a nerd. Yay! Well, nerds. speaking of which, the name of the the mountain on Pluto. Yeah. Oh yes, Mount Mount Spock or something of that. Mount nature. Spock, which is one yep. of the few. That, well, they're using a lot of the a lot of science fiction um, names, but they're also using. I think it's the mountains that are science fiction names, and the valleys are um, a myth mythological logical underworld dwellers so that there's like Cthulhu and others as well mm-hmm. um, very cool yeah I was really proud of my joke about Pluto this week and it just didn't <laughs> get the traction I was hoping for <laughs> okay did you, did let's, you see let's it? give it a moment in the sun what what was the joke that is no one else worried about the monolith on Pluto I saw that I laughed <laughs> yes, I laughed definitely. out loud Je- you did too Jespo right absolutely I saw that <laughs> Mike, Mike is very quiet. Do you, do you get the reference, Mike? The the monolith was wasn't that from one of the um wasn't that supposed to be on one of Jupiter's or Saturn's? Yeah, Europa. Well, it's it's right. like okay. I said on Twitter. The neighborhood got too expensive. They had to move. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that'll work. Okay. Oh, so all right. because of that joke, I wound up going back and watching 2010 again. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Scheider, underrated. Just gonna say it. Uh, oh, I miss him. Helen Mirren's right? in that one too, right? Yeah, yeah. she's amazing. She's it so was great. Yakov Smirnoff is so good in that movie. I that I like 2010 yes. better than I like 2001. I did. I always and I always will. But you know, you know what's so funny about it now? But it's so it's so dated. antiquated. It's I know. So dated. I know. But it's cute. Um. All right. I have some quick book book news. Book news. Okay. It's from Comic Con. Um, I have uh, a link from Trek News. This is uh, from Comic Con, the full star, uh, uh, William Shat- Shatner panel. But in it, he is reading the autobiography of James T. Kirk as Captain Kirk. So um, this is uh, the, the book is written by David Goodman. Uh, he, David is is th- sitting there right with him, and they're cracking jokes the whole time. It's hilarious. If you have not seen it uh please check it out it's an hour long so uh uh plan accordingly but um (laughs) yeah it it's it's uh it's hilarious and this is, seems like it's going to be a, a a fun book, um and I ho- I certainly hope they decide to do an audio version of it narrated oh, oh. by Shatner as Kirk. That would be awesome. And if they, that would be awesome. if they can't get Shatner to do it, uh, what's that comedian Kevin? Uh, oh Christ, he was in the usual. Kevin yeah, Pollock. Kevin. Yes, who does an amazing Shatner. So does Maurice right LaMarche. Well, don't they have? They're the ones that started to talk like William Shatner Day. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Maurice know. LaMarche and Kevin Pollack what started the... <laughs> I want to see them do a Shatner off. Oh, there is one. A shot off? It's got to be. Gotta be. <laughs> With a shot out? <laughs> but and have Shatner be judge? That would okay. be even funnier. God, he would... You know what? He would be hilarious doing that. And then, and then at the end, he has to show them how it's done. Yeah. <laughs> no, wait. You pause. This <laughs> long. I, I think Alan, my husband, figured out what it was. And, and I don't know if he's in the chat room or not, but... I think he said something about you always put the comma behind the pronoun. You 
you don't know what you're doing. I want to see. <laughs> That's a good I idea. I want to see Shatner and Christopher Walken do a scene together. It would be like the two or three lines, but it would take like 20 minutes to complete. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you make a six-hour movie with a one-page script. Oh, uh, all right. With this watch <laughs> with shoved up my ass. Is a, they say that scripts are supposed to be what is it a minute per page and uh, <laughs> it's a word per page yeah exactly all right i want to touch on something real quick hey it's something that we episode. Should... terry's yeah, touching things i'm touching Ooh. things um we talked about it two weeks ago we talked here's about it the week sanitizer. before that what was that here's some hand sanitizer <laughs> yeah really <laughs> uh it, and i'm i'm gonna start putting a few links into the into the chat room namely because it goes to show you one of my pet peeves and something we've been talking about for a couple of weeks is how crazy it gets in the Star Trek news covering world when a story gets out and everybody decides that it's all true and it's all going to be blah, blah, blah. Well, it was on the remember? internet. It has to be true. Eh. All right. Well, it's gotten... Remember how I said this is going to get out of control? Well, it has. Uh, this is the, the story that was originally published by uh, TrekMovie.com where they interviewed Mr. Michael Gamelt, who has claimed that he was in invited uh, to pitch a Star Trek series by Paramount. And we had kind of questioned the reasoning behind that. And while I was personally disappointed with some of the uh, the lack of hard questions that were placed to him by Trek movie, I was upset because I, in my heart, I knew what was the background for this story, which was, it sounded to me like this was a guy who owned the name of the website that, frankly, Paramount wanted to buy. And instead of entering into any type type of negative PR inducing lawsuit that they said, what do you want for this is my imagining my, they probably said, what do you want for the, 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 the URL? And it sounds to me like instead of him actually being invited by, Hey, look, you're, you're, your fan fiction. So awesome. We want you to come to Hollywood to, to uh, pitch to us. It was probably more or less like, I would love to be able to pitch my show to see if I could get it to work. That that in and of itself doesn't bother me. What bothers me is how these facts are missing. We don't know if this is what happened. We don't know what constituted his alleged invitation. And it, the only person who's talking about it is Mr. Gamelt himself. What bothers me is how once it got out there and we knew all the blogs were picking up, now we're getting official news agencies who are picking up on this and are starting to tweak the headlines. And you can see by the three links I've put into the chat room and will be on our site. Uh, first and foremost, Cinema Blend comes out with the headline, Star Trek Superfan Asked to Pitch a Star Trek Show. Uh, the second one is uh, uh, Screen Crush Report, Paramount Taking Star Trek Pitches for New TV Series. That one bothers me the most. Yeah. Because that says, it makes it sound like it's an open thing, that somehow Mr. Gamelt's invitation to pitch his show in lieu of money or whatever else in that they may have in a non-disclosure a non-disclosure agreement to sell his URL to Paramount so they could use Star Trek Beyond it, it, that somehow it's like an open door okay it's, Paramount's taking pitches for a television series that it can't even make which fuck it just it's uh, but all the they thing would that, be able to do is take pitches for films if they even wanted to which they don't right but the big one is NPR picked up on it and actually had an all things considered on it so now it's hit the wow uh, yeah uh, um, and and Gamelt is is doing what you would expect somebody who really wants his idea to take hold is he's 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 ringing this out for all it's worth because he is being interviewed by everybody and their mother and he is neglecting to or is refusing to comment as to the reasons why he was invited. Uh, he acknowledges that Star Trek cannot a Star Trek television series cannot be made by Paramount, but he doesn't care. He says I, I'm not going to get my hopes up because I know the industry doesn't generally do things this way, but I'm going to do my best. I've got nothing else to lose. I have to kind of admire him for that. But at the same time, what bothers me is that there is a huge piece of this story that's missing that's not getting mm -hmm. out to the Star Trek fandom. So they're, they're being misled into thinking that somehow Paramount is taking pitches for, for a Star Trek series when it's really... And I've, I'm, I mean, if he was smart, he would he would have he would have announced a, a, a Kickstarter not long after the story broke uh, a, a 
month ago. To do and what? A Kickstarter for what? To do the series himself. Oh, as a fan production? As a fan production. I mean, it, all of this publicity at this point that he's getting, I mean, it, it would have done nothing but helped him get this thing off, off the ground. But, you know... Well, his, his when asked what his dream uh, would be for the outcome of the pitch, he says, I'm pitching to Paramount because they're the ones that discovered it because of the movie tie-in. So he admits that the reason why they that Paramount even contacted him was because he had the the URL Star Trek Beyond. But I don't know, but I know that they don't have the rights to produce a new Star Trek TV series. CBS does. But my goal is to meet with them and to personally try to impress them on how this is a good idea and how this is good for the franchise and how this is good business wise and get them excited enough uh, about it enough that then they'll say, hey, CBS, you should listen to this guy and get me a pitch meeting with them. So, I mean, he's it, it, he's being honest about his intentions of what he's doing, which we all knew he would be. And I kind of have to give him credit for that. As a fan, you think, wow, you know, would I would I would I have done the same thing if if something came across? I would have to say, no, I probably would have taken a check. <laughs> Personally, yeah. I would have taken a check because that money is going to go to, to, to so much better use. However, uh, he he's a um, a video game designer. He's worked on Star Trek. He's written for Star Trek games before, and and his goal is to write Star Trek. So you can tell what he really wants to do is he wants to get a job in Hollywood writing Star Trek, and I don't blame him for that. Um, what disappoints me is that there's still a big section of this story that never got out to the fandom and um and, and now it's kind of taken on a life of its own and now everybody who doesn't understand the professional and business relationship between paramount and star trek is once again going Ooh, we're gonna get a star trek series and yeah we haven't heard one real breath that that is even remotely possible in the next two years so there yeah. Um, um, Axonar? Yeah. Next right. thing we're going to... Go ahead. So here, here we have um, Indiegogo's... Uh, Star Trek Axonar's Indiegogo uh, fundraiser. Um, they, they they have 256000 out of $250,000 goal. Uh, this is for one act <laughs> in a four-act film. Um, their goal is a million dollars. Their real so, goal is a million dollars. So so when you look at their, their Indiegogo campaign, it looks like they've been funded but really the the funding what they're looking for is a million dollars and they're looking for that within the next 23, 23 days. days 23 days next 20 minutes <laughs> uh they they still need about seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars to complete the movie yes. and yes they have already gone through an enormous amount of money and axanar has been posting um it's it's uh, uh, it, uh mr peters has been posting if you follow them on Facebook, he's been posting the breakdowns of how the money has already been spent. He's laying the books out there. Yeah, he is. He is, he is putting the books out there. It's a gutsy he's, move. It it is a gutsy move. Uh, he's going to take a lot of grief because a lot of that gutsy move. Uh, there's still a lot of fans who are. Uh, who still think it's not enough as far as transparency is concerned, but that's... What do they want to do? Live with them? <laughs> uh, it, it, there's, there's, you know... I mean... There's, there's a lot... How do I say that? There's some questions that are, okay, you say so much of this is for marketing, but what was specifically did you do to market? And so there's some there's some concerns of people kind of going, you know, did you... I mean, it, 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 they're they're learning how to be... Uh, they're, they're learning that their money is, is funding this project project and they're handling it as as a professional project right so mm -hmm. they've pitched this they had a panel at san diego comic con i'm sure that some of that marketing money went to fund their stay in san diego so they could participate in that panel now how much did they reach in in they had a huge hall of people and and hopefully they were able to to get some of those people who weren't donors before and get the word about yeah. uh, about the existence of so there's that argument of what what one donor may say is legitimate spending it, another donor may say you're wasting my money why isn't it going straight to the building of sets they're taking a lot of heat for this yeah uh, a lot a lot a lot a lot of heat and I think that they've responded with the way they felt was best which was to release the numbers of the books uh, so, and it's something that no other Shit, production that's more than has, the government has does. done ever done yet <laughs> so far I'm that, so I, very very true. It's a, but it's a then precedent. again, there aren't very many projects that are going to run into the two million plus range. Right. True. 
Um, the, one, uh, the opening line on their Indiegogo is Axanar is the first fully professional independent Star Trek film. They go on. While there, some, that word in there really is up at the line. While Which, some may call it a fan film, we are not licensed by CBS. Axanar has professionals working in front and behind the camera with fully professional crew, many of whom have worked on Star Trek itself, who ensure Axanar will be the quality of Star Trek that all fans want to see. Okay. And if any well, of first, you have watched Prelude to Axanar, the quality is amazing. It, it, it's better than most things on TV. I, I I will take some umbrage with their defense or their sensitivity to the words fan film that somehow that means it's not professional. I would disagree right. with that. I think that, that by using the term fan film that somehow it means that it's schlocky. It's not. I, I think that Axanar is, and many other fan productions are highly highly professional it's mm -hmm. the reason why a lot of fan fic that I, I i read is um highly professional these are excellent writers they're great storytellers i would dare Don't, anyone I, to say that I, that's continues why like, is not right yeah it's not professional the, the phase two is absolutely professional yeah. these are even farragut is absolutely these are people who are experienced professionals doing their trade so i take um with their defensiveness about the use of the term fan because fuck you you're either a fan or you're not so there you go alec take that one for what it's worth are you a fan yes then it's a fucking fan production are you making money off of it no then it's a fucking fan production deal with the fact that it's a title that you can be proud of as opposed to going ooh, but i'm a professional you know what you are you're a professional fan my problem is we're starting to get i'm, I'm starting to get a little bit nervous i'm starting to get a little bit nervous because of what happened with the Aliens Project this week. Yes, yeah. And and what happened with the Aliens Project, that there are people out there who do not know there was a fan production, which was highly professional. Oh, my God, amazing. Paid actors, paid actors of, of exceptional quality and people who were in the movies before, not unlike what every other high-quality fan production that Star Trek is dealing with now. And it got scrubbed. The, the 20th Century Fox finally, it was 20th Century, yes. right? Yeah. Had finally had enough and said, no, you yes. cannot move forward with the production of this, per, of your fan film because it's, it's well, infringement. And, it's and infringement. A little backstory, You're using there, our IP. Alien huh? 5 is, is, is being made with uh, Neil, um, how do you pronounce it? Blue, Blue Camp? Blue Camp? Okay. Who did uh, 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 District 9 and Chappie. Right. Um, and he's making the new Alien film. Well, one of the things was now this this Alien film film has been in process for a while. Not unlike and, a lot of our others in Star Trek, correct? Yes, like years, like two or three years. Well, come to find out that the Alien fan film, in many ways, is similar to the one that's being <laughs> done now. The the Alien film, the new Alien Five film, and 20th Century Fox, as is their right, said, you know what, we need to shut this down for you guys. We're Sorry, but we have to shut this down because, well, basically they're trying to relaunch the Alien IP right. and, with this new film. And, and this, so they got the big fat cease and desist letter. Because and, this thing that was being done was so professional. Right. There, and there's my nervousness is that while I love Axanar, I love how professional it really is. I'm, I'm, my antenna are starting to get. I'm, they're starting to go up. They're and walking I'm starting to get, too close. They're, they're walking that that fine line. Fine line. There you is know, a fine line, and it. I would be, I would be heart. Icarus flew too close to the sun, and he got burned. <laughs> His ass is sunburned. I I am getting nervous. I am very I'm getting very very nervous because some of the reasons for the cease and desist that was put out by 20th Century Fox to the Aliens um, fan or you know the fan production are, are are things that we are starting to see in other high quality fan productions for Star Trek. And I'm I'm nervous. I'm just really I'm really nervous that that one of them that somehow as wonderful as they are. And as wonderful as everybody says, oh, we're really close with CBS Legal and they promised us they're not going to do anything, that, that that somehow somebody unwillingly, unknowingly might cross a line. And, well, it trips too close to what the studio is actually working on, well, which is what it looks like Alien Identity did. Yes. Well, and But here's the thing is who really owns it, right? If, if you're writing within the universe that somebody else owns, you don't own the rights to even an original story 
kind of thing. Like if, if this whole story of Axanar is is Garth of Izar, which was a, a CBS product. He's a CBS character. He's a CBS owned. So anything that anybody else makes up about it, technically CBS can go, yeah, yeah, you can't make that. We own that character. Well, F- F- Fox, Fox and, and CBS are quite different. Uh, well, that CBS, is true. CBS has, they, they are very open, allowing fans to go ahead and pr- produce things. Uh, these great. things. I'm not sure if Fox has that same kind of reputation. I have not heard that they do. And this kind of shows that maybe they don't. Um, so it's hard It's hard to really gauge and compare the two. Um, but this is a cautionary warning. You know, you, you got to be careful. And uh, full disclosure, I did contribute to this this fundraiser. Mm-hmm. I but I I only contributed what I what I'm willing to to risk and risk and, to lose and right. never see anything from. So keep that in mind. I think this is a great project. I think it's it's worthy uh, of your support. But be aware that this could very well be shut down tomorrow, and nothing can and, happen. And from there it. and and let's not and we need to be very specific here. We're not just being specific about Axonar. We're talking about them. Everything. Yes. We're talking about them all. And and so if you're supporting any of the unofficial projects, of which there are many, just mm-hmm. always, always, always remember that you're you're donating one out of love, and two, it's very possible you won't get the end result of what you're looking to fund. So I'm not saying that Axonar is at risk of not of not meeting their goals. I hope they do. I hope that that continues continues. I mm-hmm. hope that Farragut continues, and I hope. But I'm 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 just saying. I had heard about Horizons actually. They're, they're, they're still they've been very very quiet but they've been he's been busting ass um, he's got about an hour of the over an hour of the film done and he released another screenshot and it looks amazing so yeah, um, yeah. but it's, again that's another one where it's, it's just a buyer beware kind of thing and it's yes. something we come across every every couple of we weeks want you we have all to remind to you succeed. right we want them all to succeed we because we love everyone Renegades is so different from Axanar which is so different from Continues, continues, which is so yeah. different from Farragut, and and that's what I love about them. What, now let me ask I, you a question. I am, I'm dying for somebody to do something more in the line of the T T N G era. Mm-hmm. I really want that done. But and the, Horizon what, at least took the risk of going uh, Enterprise, but everything is CG. I mean, yeah, yeah they have uh, they have real actors, but it's all green screened. It's all well, CG. So let me ask you a question. It is time consuming. Yeah. What what is harder, peace in the Middle East or getting the fan productions to all get along <laughs> you know what oh, man i'm glad i'm glad you brought it up you know i would have to say peace in the middle east i right now to see the infighting between between the although i have to say it's not everybody but between most of them between most of the big bigger budgeted y'all, you know y'all are making george and bill shatner look like lovers yeah gumby and pokey man i'll tell you <laughs> It's, it, and, and that makes me sad. It does. It's it's very frustrating because Imagine you love if them Dayton, all. Imagine and Dayton and Kevin and and <laughs> Dave Mack. Dude, and, I would pull out popcorn for that. And and, and uh, Christopher um, Bennett and Keith DeCannon and, and all them were the same way about their books as some of these fan productions are towards each other. Oh my God! Hadn't been having them forced to, to work on a project like The Fall. There would be like all kinds of sabotage. It wouldn't moments. happen, and we would all be deprived true yeah speaking of which i started the new dti novel caprella bennett you are amazing with those it's things. so good isn't it yeah <laughs> the ebook right that's the one that you're talking about yeah i just got to the point where um they're <laughs> they've transported to the other place and they know things aren't quite right mm, yes. Yes. Um, yes what is, what, what is the, the the title of this one I, I forget it's um it's in my kindle and i don't have it in front of me yeah um i i'm reading an Enterprise novel at the moment, so it's not Matthew long. Anderson. Get on that, please. Stop, <laughs> stop with the Brandon Fraser. <laughs> oh, oh God. Too funny. Then the Christopher E. Be- Christopher L. Christopher E. Christopher L. Bennett E. Novel of uh, DTI name, please. I'm Brandon picking it up Fraser. right now as well. Encino Man. Um. Mm. Well, as you but guys, yeah, that's look for that's that. it though. Could you imagine if they acted that way? No, no. And 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 I'm the collectors. Sorry, that's the name of the, the title. That's the title. I guess it's it's the it's the it's the backbiting. It's the whole. Nah, 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 nah. 
you know, that it's that unprofessional thing. Instead of being supportive of everybody else, it's, well, you know, they're risking this and they're risking this. Oh, yeah, well, they're risking this and they're doing this. And I'm thinking, you know what? You're all really fucking pissing me off here. You're all Is fight, it you're ego? All running is the it jealousy? What I is don't it? know. I don't know. I really don't fucking care. Now, all I, I know, know. Now, I'm going to say this because, believe it or not, I'm going to pull some punches here. I know that there's one person who others don't like because they think he has an attitude or whatever, and he's also very successful lately. But you can't knock the quality of what's come out. I, I, it, let's face it. We're dealing with a bunch of people who have a lot of experience in Hollywood, and that comes with a certain ego. bundle of ego on, on its own. And yes, that's... Um, but Look, the James fact Cameron of the matter the is, is that you're all there. working on unofficial productions. Yeah. You can call them professional. I'll call them professional fan fiction. I will call them professional fan productions all day long. They are professional, but you're all unofficial and you're all you're all skirting the same rules and laws Look, and you're James. all allowed to exist because CBS says you can. Do me a favor, get over yourselves, stop infighting, allow the fans to to enjoy all of them. And I, I think what's disappointing me the most is how divided divided the fans themselves have become. Yeah. It's like, oh well, uh, we don't want to support continues because Axanar is so much better and, and, or we don't want to support phase two because Farragut this. And I'm, you know, boy, that's almost it. like saying I won't watch this series. That's really good because it's on sci-fi. No, it has nothing to do with that. <laughs> was that you, Mike? Yeah. Yes, that was me. <laughs> yeah, listen, to him, Terry, to, that. listen to him try not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that if, how would I say this? This would be more like us not going to uh, see the new Star Trek film because they didn't like the fact that JJ had anything to do with it. It's the same reason why well, uh, people on. go, oh, no. I hate Enterprise because Enterprise was just not, I won't know. go see a Michael Bay film. I'm not going to waste my money. Yeah. Something I know is going to piss me off from the pre-credits right. on. <laughs> But you know, the, I'm, I'm, let, look, us, Jane, let us have fun with it. it but yeah. it, the fact of the matter is, there either you're intending to do this out of love and fun to continue on with Star Trek, or you have an ulterior motive. And if it's an ulterior motive that you've got, will you let us know what it is so we have a very clear idea? If what you're looking for is to to be the one that CBS chooses as the as the next heir apparent. Ain't gonna then, happen. Then, then, it, yeah, it ain't gonna happen. It ain't because you're acting like a jerk, and CBS doesn't want to deal with jerks either. They don't want to, ah, no. Or, I hope not, Roger Sanderson. He says there can only be one. No, who made up that stupid rule? No, that's what their <laughs> attitude is. I know. Oh, I which, see. Which, which is stupid. It, I mean, there doesn't have to be one. It, the the universe is big enough to to have all of these together, yeah. Yeah. and and fans can just 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 love them all. I do. I do too, and and I do. I really do love them all, all for their very different reasons. I I like all of them. Yes, some of them aren't quite as they don't have the budget. They don't don't have the the special effects and frankly a lot of them don't have the quality acting but it's the stories that matter to me it, it it's the reason why i love watching those is because this is a group of people who are doing it because they're having the time of their lives and you can you can see it in their eyes when they're performing you can mm -hmm. see it in in the quality of the scripts that they are producing which is pretty damn amazing fan fiction still continues to to blow my mind with the quality of work that's coming out from so many any fans who are never ever read. They're never read. They they don't care. They're out. They're producing it because they love to produce it. Now, if you're going out there and producing a a, a, a fifty thousand dollar project or a two million dollar project or a ten thousand dollar project, and you're doing it because you really want to be the one, a la Michael Gamelt, to be the one to say I'm going to be I I'm going to get the crack at the next show then excuse me if I'm going to be a bit acerbic and, and, and look at you and kind of go, then you're not doing it out of love. You're doing it because you want to make a profit. And there's where it crosses that, that, that theoretical line for me going, if what you're really wanting to do is make your show the next Star Trek show so you can make money off of it and you're going to use everybody else's money in order for you to, to fund your ability to make a profit from it, that's where I have a problem. That's where I have a problem going, you shouldn't have asked for that money to begin with. So either you're Asking money from people so you can make a project out of love with no anticipation or expectation that you're going to be making a profit or being able to make a salary out of this in your future. 
or you 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 just don't ask for the money and go fucking start writing scripts for the for Hollywood and work your way up like Gene Roddenberry did. So there. On on a lighter note, I'm going to share a link. This is uh, an article from HeavyMetal.com of all places, and it's Captain Kirk's ten best fighting moves in GIF form. <laughs> Alan showed this to me at at, uh, at dinner the other night here, and it was just too funny. The first I think one our is... favorite one was the wall one. I think that was. <laughs> I mean, check out some of the, just the, the, the names that and, and the images that some of these uh, conjure up. Pillow blindness, the ear slap, the kiss and dismiss, human projectile, wall of destruction. <laughs> the wall of destruction was the one that cracked me up. It's like, I'll use the this wall and bounce con. off of it. Oh, I love that move. Which one? The scissor con? No, the wall of destruction. The wall of destruction. That is a yeah. pro wrestling move like yeah. no other. <laughs> Uh, He's coming off the ropes. He's coming. Yeah. Uh, b- uh, beam him down. The Shatner chop. Uh, the double Kirk fist. Kirk Foe, baby. And the human bowling ball. I love the fact that they <laughs> use the, the explosion of the uh, the Death Star as when he hits the back of the Gorn with the double fist. <laughs> so funny. I love Kiss and Dismissed. Yeah. I mean, they're, so, they're yeah. very funny. It's just that's a great. fun, lighter note after such a heavy topic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a real quick lighter note. I know we're only touching on it, and the part of the reason why we're only touching on it is because I haven't had a chance to get into the game. I want to play Star Trek Online. Warp engines are online. Course laid in, Captain. Engage. Your ship. Warning. Ship is under attack. Your crew. Move out. Your destiny. Since the release of season 10.5 in Star Trek Online. <gasps> Gasp. I, well, it's I've fun. had company and yes. I've had, uh, we've had to throw $1,800 into the truck. Oh, oh my goodness. And um, so we've been a little busy. So yeah. I'm going to be, yeah, I'll probably get into the game this afternoon and, and see what that's like. I understand that there is a new featured episode featuring Aaron Eisenberg as Nog, correct? Yep. Uh, um, there's also uh, a couple other voice uh, voices in there. Seven of Nine, Jerry Ryan, and uh, Paris uh, O'Neill. Robert McNe- Duncan McNeil. McNeil, awesome. yes. Um, there's also, let me think of what else. Uh, season 10.5 also comes out with the new fleet um, system. And yes. it also comes out with the new, there's got new new tier six ships. I mean, this is, um, it's, it's a big, big patch. It's a big, big release. And I'm looking forward to touching on it. We'll talk more about about it next week when I've had a chance to get into the game and play it. Uh, there's also a news, real quick news release from Disruptor Beam, our friends over at Disruptor Beam, who are uh, creating Star Trek timelines. Uh, there's a nice little article there, a blog about how uh, conflicts are handled in the game. Mm-hmm. I think, Mike, you can put that link in the chat room. And I think that's kind of, you said that Trexels, yeah. you've been doing some stuff in Trexels too? Uh, I have, uh, but real quick, there's also also a uh, face on Facebook uh, for timelines. There's a video that talks about um, uh, how players uh, advance through Star Trek timelines, and uh, in it there was a there was a, a line where they're or they're talking also about you know building your crew um, teams and uh, away teams and also you know the ship classes. But there was something that that I had thought was uh, was very interesting. It was a line about how um, you could it's it seemed like you can, when you build your team, you can have the same character from different timelines on the same away mission. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of interesting. I was like, whoa. So we can have like uh, um, uh, in game uh, Admiral Janeway with uh, uh, Macrocosm uh, Janeway, <laughs> you know. Uh, huh. On the same team, going you know against uh, whoever the bad guy is in timelines. I just thought that was kind of an interesting thing. So uh, check out the video. They go into a lot more detail, a lot more information than just that little snippet that I did. But it's worth checking out. Cool. Now Very before cool. we before we wrap up this amazing two hundredth, <laughs> look who, look who's in the audience, Jeff, uh, Terry. Thank you for. I know you've been sitting in the room and you haven't been talking. And look look who's yet. in the audience, hmm? Terry. Well, Lindsay Lohan. I'm, I'm good. Then. Everybody say hello. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> live from next rehab. Week, next week is <laughs> exactly. Next week is 201. Are we not doing the following Sunday because we're all going to be converging on New Mexico? Yeah. I I I think But we that... will do a cooking with G&T, correct? Correct. Okay. We'll be doing we'll we'll do a, a cooking with G&T. We'll find a way to make that happen. We have no idea where we'll be if it'll be Twitch or or whatever. We'll find a way to make that happen. But until then that the, we will not have a show that week. We'll, so we'll do episode 201 next week. The week after that will be the week that we start to um, the clan comes in for the ca- caravan to Vegas. Uh, we'll so when we a, all when we all meet at Vanguard Station. Right. We'll do some kind of a live show. We'll announce it on our our Twitter account or whenever whenever we figure that out. And then uh, we'll be covering STLV and our lovely uh, Janice will be covering Shoreleaf. Yes, she will. Beautiful and, Janice. Uh, so we've got Shoreleaf coming up. Has there been an? I don't think there's been any real new announcements with regards to Star Trek. Uh, Las Vegas. I don't think that they've changed their uh, lineup at all. No. And uh, uh, I have a what? request. Uh, yes. Next week, Janet uh, or Janice? Excuse me, Janice. Too many J names. Um, I know. Janice, I would like you to come on the show next week to uh, kind of talk about shore leave. So yep. please uh, join us. Yes, yes, yes. Oh well, she will be in the southern office next week, so she can do. Wait. That. Okay, awesome. cool. Cool. All right, you guys. I think that does it. I know that we didn't do anything super crazy for episode 200, but we had a lot of news and a, it had been a What you didn't see was when the camera wasn't on us, we were doing coke off of hookers' asses. <laughs> and um, Christopher 13 puts in the appropriate photo. At the exact same time. Right, right, exactly. I want to also uh, mention really quick uh, that uh, last week, since we had no show, news coverage did continue. If you watch watched our um twitter and yes. uh, facebook thank um, you janet. janet thank you michael you're welcome Janet posted a lot of links that were newsworthy. So even though we didn't talk about, you can still be in the know by following us on Twitter <laughs> and That's Facebook. Right. And Facebook and Pinterest and everybody else. I think oh, we're on the, everything. By and, the way, Pinterest, one thing you might notice is uh, you see that there's a board. There's a pin there board right next is. to the uh, whoa, <laughs> to the uh, <laughs> to the chat room. Yes. If you refresh your screen, you'll see different stuff on that because we got a little fancy little nugget on uh, on our page now. Look oh. at you. Use the technical term. It's a nugget. I don't know what the hell it's really called. Widget. That's it. Widget. Thank you. And I <laughs> want to thank uh, thank uh, all our guests who stop by. Uh, David Mack, thank you for stopping in. Keith DeCanado, always a pleasure. And Swallow <laughs> joining us. That was a huge <laughs> surprise. I wasn't expecting that. Harvey Corman. Harvey Corman. Harvey Corman. Of course, the Tim great Conway. Tim Conway showing up as Dorf. Of course, yes. A little short and thing. of course, Paul Lynn. Um, and real quick, I want to take, thank, you know, uh, Nick, Terry, I love you guys. Uh, Janet, thank you, you for all you, you do for us. Thank you, thank you, thank uh, you. Steve, wherever you are out there in the world, <laughs> uh, thank you for, for your assistance as well. He's been uh, a great help, oh, yeah. especially on away missions. Yes, um, Steve is, look, I despise give him Steve shit with every fiber love. of my being. <laughs> But I love the guy. Oh, you love the guy. And and I do need to, <laughs> to do a big shout out to our friends over at Club 602. Yes. They have always been really good about pitching our show, and we want to be able to pitch them back. And I should, and I'm sorry oh I haven't God. been as good. But Club 602 rocks. I mean, prepare to be offended. That's how they go. And they offend everybody, and they make me laugh very, very hard. <sighs> Sunday so, all just put something in the chat room that actually I uh, even I was like wow oh, oh my dude. but oh, dude. but I can one up it oh, oh my Terry well, Janet and Mike you've already seen it Mike it's yeah. over oh. you couldn't stop laughing oh god no don't oh, it's <laughs> but, going up baby <laughs> well, it's going up before we okay you post <laughs> it out uh, and I'll say this and find the last the, the the last the last thing I want to say is I want to thank our fans yes. for listening and for being there and for encouraging us to keep doing this crazy shit that we do. God damn you, Nick. <laughs> That's so wrong. Oh, man. I'm trying to look away, but I can't. It's so wrong. Even, uh, you know, here's the thing. I was like, I literally was offended, but couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, because oh, you've seen man. yourself in the mirror. Oh! 
okay. Yeah, but I, I didn't think my neck, my headband looked that, you know, that good on me. <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha. you. Don't worry about it. Yeah, well, it's Olivia Newton-John look. Let's just put it that way. All right. Have oh, a great one. Oh, hello. There, there, there you go. Now we got thank something you. else in the chat room. You're welcome. There you go. There you go. Oh, that, thank that, you. That's why I, that. I, I read Pinterest. That so much. Yeah. All right, you guys. Until next week for episode <laughs> two. <laughs> <laughs> Pee Wee Herman oh, on his gosh. bike. <laughs> right he's down the TNG behind. hallway. <laughs> Epic. Right there. Thank you. Don't forget, we are going to be interviewing James Kerwin and Kipley Brown. Yeah. This week yeah. to talk about Star Trek Continues. I would still like to extend a verbal invitation to anybody from fucking Axanar to talk to us about Axanar, but seeing as though we've asked them a bazillion times and they don't show up, I would love to talk to you again. So there, I'm just throwing it out there. We'll have to um, the well, I can, I can get in touch with people. <laughs> well, then do that. Because we'll have, have to, to talk to you about Axanar. Oh, okay. Before I forget, we talked about STLV. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you look to the right of our, our chat room here, it is also now nine weeks until Baltimore Comic Con. Baltimore Comic Con. The lovely Janice and I will be covering that. Yay, Baltimore Comic Con. <laughs> And we'll so, uh, we'll pitch a little bit more about that as we come up uh, closer to those dates. And again, I think that's kind of it. We're we'll see you next week. So next week will be the pre the the pre STLV uh, show number two hundred one, and uh, we'll catch up with you next. week. And maybe week. Adrian can join us and talk about uh, con prep and the lovely Miss Janice. The lovely well. Miss Janice. Great. Okay, you guys. Until next week, live long and prosper. Kapla. Thank you, everybody. Joe Lantru, bitches. Oh, Janice Dickinson's here. I didn't see that. Music for the G&T Show is provided by Warp 11, Andrew Allen, Grethor, and Five Year Mission. This has been a Busy Little Beaver production. I'm gonna take a five year tour. Only go where no man's gone.